So this is going to be a quick fire intro to electromagnetism um, to do with the forces and induction and exciting bits like that. So first of all, let's have a magnetic field going into the page or the screen or the board or wherever this is being shown. So this is our magnetic field. It's shown that it goes into the board because it's an X, like on an arrow. It's the uh, the tail. The tail, uh, when you look at it, it looks a bit like an X or a rocket if you prefer. When it's coming out from the board, it's a point, like in the point, so you'd see them like more like this. That would be a magnetic field. In any case, this is our magnetic field going into the board, uh, into the page, and we're going to have a positive charge that is moving at a velocity V and it's entering into this field. As soon as it hits the field, um, there's going to be an interaction, because remember a moving charge creates a magnetic field around itself which will interact with a fixed magnetic field. Um, it's still moving from left to right and there will be a force experienced by this and we use something called uh, the right hand slap rule um, to work this out where your thumb is in the direction of the current or the conventional current, your fingers give the direction of the magnetic field and your slap is the force with the direction of the force. So in this case um, your thumb is going from left to right in the direction of conventional current and flow of positive charge. Your fingers go into um, the screen and your palm the slap pushes upwards so there's a force experienced um, upwards like that. So just going through that again thumb is going left to right in the direction of the movement of positive charge fingers into the screen is the direction of the magnetic field and then a slap upwards will give the direction of the force on this charge in the field. So that's how we work out how the two magnetic fields will interact. The permanent one, the fixed one, the B field there and the magnetic field around the electron uh, um, positive charge in this case. If it was an electron, if it was a negative charge um, moving in the same direction that would mean the conventional current is actually that way even though the velocity is that way. Um, so because right hand rules you always use conventional current that would just mean the force is going downwards I think you could have predicted that I should have asked because it's better better, uh, better research, educational research so it shows that if you have to predict what's going to happen uh, before I tell you you'll um, remember it better and you'll learn it better I've got to try and remember to do that in any case you should be actively watching these videos trying to anticipate what's going to happen and making those predictions yourself in any case go back to um, our positive charge experiences a force upwards, it's going to cause it to change direction of its path. It's now going in this direction. Um, in this case, uh, it's also going to experience a force, but it's, um, yeah, the fingers go, your thumb goes in the direction of the motion, which is now uh, this way, and your fingers go the direction of the magnetic field into the board, and your slap is now this direction, so the force is here. And this looks a little bit familiar. It looks like something else. I wonder what it might be. Maybe you could guess in advance, anticipate, what is it? It's circular motion, because there's a force directing or changing the direction of this particle so that it follows a circular path, and it's always experiencing a force towards the centre until it leaves the field here, and then it just carries off in a straight line. But in any case, let's carry on, moving on. So that's a force on a charge, and um, if it was the electron, it would experience a curved path in the other direction, and then straight out once it's out of the field. Um, Okay, now we want to look at something else, because this is just a building block, this is a step up. We want to look at um, a wire that has a current passing through it. Now, there's another rule, this is the right hand grip rule. They actually have all sorts of different names and everyone calls them different things, but just get the general principle of this. There's a current going up there and there will be a magnetic field around this wire uh, in the direction, according to the right hand grip rule, your thumb is again current and, and the direction of your fingers from the grip gives the B field direction. So in this case your thumb is upwards and you like this is like giving thumbs up to someone or if you're hitching a ride, um, hitchhiking, you shouldn't hitchhike, dangerous. Um, and your fingers give the direction of the magnetic field so that means it's coming around in front and behind the wire it's going back there but in front it's coming around. Okay, you can work that one out, play with that a little bit more. Thumb, direction of the mag um, uh, current in the wire, fingers, direction of the magnetic field. Um, so now, if we go back to our magnetic field, and we put a wire uh, inside of that with a current in it, 
it's going to experience a force. Um, let's go to purple. Here's our wire, current going that direction. Um, the fixed magnetic field is there. B should keep all these labels consistent. So now um, we're going to have to go to uh, the right hand slap rule again um, to, to work this out. Your thumb goes in the direction of the current flow, fingers in the direction of the magnetic field into the board, thumb pointing upwards. The slap is going to be to the left, so there'll be a force on this wire pushing it to the left. Okay, And you could think of this uh, as an extension of the right hand slap rule as applied to charges. You can think of the wire as made up of a whole bunch of charges. And there'll be a force on this wire. And that, that force on the wire, which is carrying a current, um, is how we get the motor effect, and there's a separate video on the DC motor, direct current motor. Um, yeah, so that's that's another interesting bit. Oh, now I've lost my marker about what I was going to show next. Okay, uh, I think I remember. This time, um, we're going to have a magnetic field, and we're going to move a wire through it. This is this is a different situation. Previously we've had current already in a wire. This time we're going to take a wire. I'm drawing it thick this time, full of positive charges, because this is going to make it a little bit easier to see what's going on. And we're going to move. So, so we are moving it with a particular velocity. This is similar to the very first example with a positive charge moving through. And we want to see what's going to happen. Um, and if you're familiar with this, the generator you know that we can generate a current flow or a voltage if it's not connected to a circuit. Um, so we want to work out what direction it's going to be and then I'm going to tell you about the formula which is F equals B I L uh, oh wait that was that was this one, this one is V equals B uh, V L yes that's right okay so F equals bill above oh, no, I'll tell you about that another time, or you can work it out yourself. B is magnetic field, I is the current in the Y, L is the length of wire in the field. You can make the length longer by looping it in a coil, but you have to be very careful with your calculations there. Same as with V equals BVL. V is the voltage induced. B is magnetic field strength. V is the velocity that you're moving the wire through, and L is the length of wire um, coming the field here. So, uh, let's look at a single charge, positive charge moving from left to right. That would be the direction of the conventional current, if we're just considering the single charge. Because we're trying to find the force on one charge to find the overall direction of force on all of the charges. So we've got the force on one charge going from left to right. Uh, magnetic field into the page, so thumb is going left to right, fingers going into the board, into the board, not the page. That means the force on a single charge is going to be upwards. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, so, and it can't follow a circular path because it's bound within the wire itself. This is the wire here. So each of these charges is going to feel a force upwards. So overall, this end of the wire will become positive, which means this end of the wire will become negative. And so we'll have a discernible current flow in one direction as a result of these charges all in a line being moved through the magnetic field. We call it a Y. That's how a generator works. So uh, it's good to look at some examples of that. Um, I don't have time to do that in, in this, but I really want you to compare how the motor works, um, which is which was this one, okay, where you've got um, a wire with a current already flowing through it, and it experiences a force, turning the coil, if you like, and then compare it to this one where you've got um, no current flowing in the wire but you move the wire and generate a current. That's the difference. Okay, so you might like to go back and watch this video just to um, catch up with those differences, very subtle differences. I'm going to show you a modification to uh, the motor rule and um, maybe even to, the, um, to this generator rule as well in the next video.